Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In this episode, we will discuss the breakout of the Russo-Japanese War and how it would lead to a revolution in Poland in 1905. From 1901 to 1903, uh, there had been an economic recession uh, leading to wide-scale unrest. Uh, in 1904, uh, Russia went to war with, with Japan uh, in the Russo-Japanese War, which, uh, in which the, the Russians didn't do uh, well at all. And that was significant because it was the, the first time that a European army had been defeated by what was seen to be a non-European uh, yes, force. Uh, yes, uh, Japan had, after the Meiji Restoration of uh, 1868, and 69 had started taking great steps toward, towards modernization. They were copying everything they could from the West. And by 1904, they were able to field uh, armies and uh, fleets that were able to defeat the Russians. Um, on a side note, I, I could mention that uh, my uh, great-grandfather was one of the Poles that, that was uh, drafted, um, sent to the East and, and, and fought the, uh, the Japanese in, uh, in Siberia. Um, th these were additional strains on Polish society. Uh, no Pole was happy to be drafted and to be sent that far east to fight against uh, a very exotic uh, people that uh, the Poles had nothing to do with. Uh, so the economic recession of 1901 to 1903, uh, coupled with uh, the Russo-Japanese War, uh, created great tensions in Poland. Uh, by January 1905, uh, the Polish workers uh, were starting to strike uh, across uh, Polish territory. Uh, the same was happening in, uh, in, the, in the larger cities of Russia. Uh, here in Warsaw on, on January 14th, uh, the Poles took out in massive numbers to the streets. Uh, a large strike was declared. And in the, in the ensuing days, uh, the Russian troops, especially the Cossacks stationed here, the, the, the mounted cavalry that uh, was sent in to do crowd control, uh, they killed around 90 people in Warsaw, just leading to greater unrest. Uh, in uh, in St. Petersburg, uh, on January 22nd, you had the Great Massacre that was really the, uh, the starting point of the Russian Revolution of 1905. And these ideas... Uh, would spread from St. Petersburg again back to uh, Polish territory. And uh, the winter and spring of 1905 was just one long uh, stretch of uh, one strike after another. Um, by, uh, by April, you had around 400,000 Polish workers out on strike. Uh, clashes were taking place in, in many cities. Uh, Labor Day, naturally, May 1st, uh, was another um, boiling point. And, uh, and, and here, uh, 30 Poles were, were shot during a demonstration in, in Warsaw. Uh, by late May, uh, it was starting to spread more and more to the city of Łódź. Uh, Łódź was uh, a city that had been created uh, less than a century earlier. Uh, it was growing very quickly. Uh, it had an enormous focus on uh, manufacturing, uh, especially um, the, the textile industry uh, demanded enormous factories with a lot of workers, and uh, there the uh, socialist movement was particularly strong. So by, by late May, uh, they started uh, striking and demonstrating, uh, and the first casualties uh, were taking place. By, uh, by mid-June, uh, the, the clampdown was increasing, and now uh, the Russians were, were shooting to kill. Uh, some of the first um, people that fell, uh, they had their funeral on June 20, 21st, uh, and 60 to 70,000 Poles, mainly the workers, came out to uh, show their support during, the, during this, um, uh, th these funerals. But again, the Russians started shooting, killing another dozen Poles or so, and uh, on the evening, the next day, June 22nd, uh, the workers had had enough, and on the evening they started building barricades all across the city. Uh, they started mm, attacking uh, Russian officials, uh, policemen, uh, these Cossacks that were patrolling the streets wherever they could, and uh, summarily killing them. 
Um, this turned into what became known as the witch insurrection that would go on for three days. Uh, the, the next day, uh, on the 23rd, the entire city was on lockdown. Uh, not a single factory was open, uh, not a single store was open. Uh, the ones that didn't want to participate, they uh, stayed at home, locked in uh, for, for, for their own safety. But many of the workers took to the streets and were desperately looking for uh, weapons. Uh, they did man manage to get their hands on, on some uh, rifles, but uh, still they were um, far from w being well enough uh, armed to be able to fight the, um, the Russians uh, efficiently. However, uh, the massive barricades and the fact that they were fighting in an urban environment made it very difficult for the Russian troops to, uh, to extinguish the, the uprising uh, straight away. Uh, the, the next few days uh, led to very uh, bloody street battles during which around 200 workers were killed, uh, another 2,000 were, were injured, uh, and dozens of, of, uh, of Russians were killed. Uh, finally, once uh, the smoke had cleared, um, there were still small-scale hit-and-run attacks that would go on for the, for the coming months. Uh, but the city itself had been pacified. Um, however, these uh, strikes and unrest in, um, in, in, in Poland would continue uh, up to 1907. Um, this organization that Piłsudski had created, uh, the PPS and its, uh, the Polish Socialist Party and its uh, armed wing, uh, they had been slightly surprised by the scale of, um, uh, of the fighting in, in, in Łódź. Uh, they sent uh, a unit from, from Warsaw to reinforce. They had around uh, two dozen men uh, in Łódź that were doing whatever they could to, to aid this uprising, but uh, it was f far from enough. These tensions uh, would remain in Poland up, uh, up till the start of the First World War. Uh, naturally, uh, the national democracy movement of uh, Roman Dmowski uh, greatly opposed this uh, uh, armed struggle that uh, Józef Piłsudski and the Polish Socialist Party was was leading, but um, at the end, when Piłsudski started transforming some of these socialist um, armed militias, you could say, into more of a paramilitary group, uh, especially in 1911, 1912, 1913, and the years leading up to the First World War, um, these were the men that f formed the the core, the the backbone of the so-called riflemen's associations that were, uh, that especially were allowed in, in Austria-Hungary, as they also sensed that a great war was coming and they wanted uh, uh, the Poles to be mobilized and, and ready for war. And even though the revolution of uh, 1905 was a much smaller uh, scale uprising than what had happened during the January uprising, it had more than 600 battles uh, fought all across Poland. You had 25,000 insurgents killed, uh, more than 150,000 insurgents that uh, at some point had taken up arms. Um, the uprising of 1905 was smaller, uh, but um, they managed to achieve uh, some success. Uh, the Russians, they were forced to uh, roll back some of the russification efforts, especially uh, within education. And this, uh, you could say, that created the sense that the Poles, they, um, they smelled blood, so to say. Uh, and if the result of the January uprising of 1863-1864 was uh, this complete withdrawal from armed struggle as, um, as a method uh, to, to oppose the Russians, uh, the 1905 rev revolution was the opposite. It, uh, it created an urge uh, among the Poles uh, to fight more, and um, it also uh, gave them back the sense that something could be achieved by fighting. It's a fascinating story. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Poland Daily History. Thank you for watching.